Here's a TV that looks like an apple. Opening some Zelda cards that I got hold of a couple months ago. See what's in them. We got Fierce Deity's Mask. We got Bug Catching. We got Link. Ganon. Girahim. Uh, stickers? Link Between World stickers and a shiny from Skyward Sword. They are really thin and I mean honestly these look at look at that one. The shit. Nintendo hates piracy, obviously. Most corporations do. Just hating piracy isn't particularly unique or exciting, but Nintendo is exceptionally protective of its intellectual property rights in a way that goes beyond even the most DRM-flavoured shenanigans of late 2000s Ubisoft. Not only does Big Ol' N have a massive raging hate on for piracy, it mercilessly goes after emulation and fan games regardless of context, to the point where it even interfered with Jeff Keighley's annual video game advertisements, ensuring certain games couldn't get nominated in the fan game category due to them infringing on the company's precious intellectual property. On the subject of ROMs, Nintendo has been notoriously hardline, which is ironic considering they might be downloading and reselling them, not even accepting the general get-out clause of owning the original games in a physical state. In fact, the company has gone on record as saying that emulators represent, and I quote, the greatest threat to date to the intellectual property rights of video game developers. Developers. On its extensive corporate page about copyright and trademark infringement, well worth a read, Nintendo stresses in a way I'd almost classify as desperate just how illegal it is to download any copy of any game for any reason outside of its own official channels. And of course we've all seen how it polices YouTube, using Content ID to enforce its dominance over any content containing Nintendo game footage, even if it's just a few seconds of a Pokemon trailer in a two hour podcast thanks very fucking much Pokemon. I'd go so far as to say that no company is as obsessed with upholding its copyright as Nintendo, to transgressive degrees, and that's really quite ironic when you consider the following fact. It's perfectly morally okay to pirate Nintendo games, more so than any other game publisher. Now you might just think that's an opinion, but I mean it when I say it's a fact. It's an objective truth that has been scientifically tested by scientists in science facilities. Just ask this scientist. He's right. If for example, you bought an NES Classic with its exciting 30 games and its exciting 10 inch long controller cord. You might think it objectionable or at least questionable to immediately plug that machine into your computer and plonk 700 games on it so you can play Tiny Toon Adventures and laugh while your NES Classic hovers 4 feet from the ground, suspended by its HDMI cable and controller lead. However, it's not wrong to do this. In fact, thanks to Nintendo's own views on the flexibility of copyright law, doing something like this is your moral imperative. <laughs> I win. I win at making petulant points on the internet. <laughs> I like being the cat. Look at this shit with the controller. Now I'm not saying you should actually do it, of course. You'd never once catch me saying Nintendo's entire library is free game and should be raided like a village invaded by Vikings. However, if we apply Nintendo's liberal interpretation of copyright law to ourselves, and not just Nintendo, then Nintendo's entire library sort of is free game and should be raided like a village invaded by Vikings, the really, really pillagey sort of Vikings. 
But I know what you're asking. You're asking why, when I started this episode, I talked about how hardline Nintendo is about enforcing its IP rights, and yet here I am, using words like flexibility and liberal. The answer's simple, of course. For Nintendo, copyright law is a one-way street. It gets to protect itself at the expense of others, and others aren't allowed a say. Hey, let's briefly change the subject and talk about how copyright disputes work on YouTube. It's totally unrelated. There are two ways in which companies can protect their IP on YouTube. Content ID is the first and most common, an automated system that trawls videos for music or footage and matches it with the content owned by various corporations. Said corporations can choose what happens with the flagged videos. They can stop all ads running on it, effectively ensuring nobody profits off the footage. They can keep ads and take the money themselves, making all the cash off someone else's video. Less commonly, they'll restrict the vid to certain markets. If you use any of Aqua's songs, for example, the record label will block the video from being viewed in Germany. Germans hate Aqua. As far as the affected channel goes, they only really have one option if they want to argue back file an appeal. You can file a dispute on multiple grounds, but most common, and certainly for our purposes, we're talking about appealing based on fair use. The argument that while you don't own the footage, what you did with it distanced it enough from its original context to not represent a threat to the company's property rights. At this point, one of three things will happen. The company will accept the appeal and release its claim, reverting any monetization control back to the YouTuber. Or the company will ignore the appeal, which happens 99% of the time because this whole situation is too fucking petty for most companies to give a shit about. Which means the claim will automatically evaporate after 30 days and YouTube will award any ad revenue it held in escrow to the YouTuber. The third option, increasingly uncommon among video game publishers, is that the appeal will be reviewed and then rejected by the company. Content ID claim is upheld and the company is free to make or halt money on the content for any reason. Oh, the second way in which a company can protect its IP is is by issuing a DMCA style takedown, which has been abused in the past by companies like Fun Creators, Digital Homicide, and Entola Studios. Most companies won't go this far, of course, because it makes you look like a total dickhead. <laughs> now, a lot of you saw where this was going a while ago, so let's cut to the fucking chase. If Nintendo thinks using isolated video game footage in an original video work is infringing on its IP, it is flagrantly dismissing fair use, which is part however much Nintendo would like to ignore it, of copyright law. And Nintendo does think using isolated video game footage in an original work infringes on its IP, that's what it thinks. As many long-time viewers will know, Nintendo is by far the worst when it comes to abusing content ID to falsely flag videos for infringement regardless of context, and it will uphold those claims. As explained, while many publishers use content ID, many of them will release their claims upon appeal or ignore it, since most of the free fucking world has accepted by now that when you're using game footage as illustration in a critical video series such as this, it's absolutely protected by fair use as a substantially altered work that in no way threatens the rights or earnings of a corporation. Hell, even a lot of companies are lenient on Let's Play videos now, with only a few staunch holdouts continuing to enforce YouTube's automated copyright system to deny or seize money from Let's Players. Nintendo, of course, has quite famously refused to entertain exceptions. The Jimquisition is flagged by Nintendo more than any other company, Konami included, and Konami's the fucking worst thing in the world. Even if you really fuck with the footage, Content ID is very good at ratting you out to Nintendo, and unlike other companies that either release or ignore the appeals of the affected channel, Nintendo actively refuses them. It goes out of its way to say no to you. From personal experience, that's how it's been. All the time. No exceptions, no mercy, no fair use consideration or whatsoever. So I think you'll forgive me for feeling a little confused and conflicted when Nintendo publishes such strong criticisms of piracy and emulation on its corporate page, how reverent it seems to be of copyright law when its own actions are so very, very dismissive of it. And of course I'm not actually confused or conflicted, I know exactly what the freaking deal is. Nintendo believes the law exists only to serve them, only them, and fuck everybody else. Well, Nintendo, you know, fuck you. The Jimquisition is designed to be 100% ad-free, a promise I sometimes can't keep to all my viewers and Patreon patrons when you slap commercials on my fucking work and then reject my fair use claim when I claim fair use because the usage I'm claiming to be fair is fair when I use the footage you're unfairly claiming I'm not using fairly under the fair use exception, and that don't seem fair.
fair. What is fair is my saying that if you want to cherry pick the bits of copyright law that help you and ignore the bits that don't, I'll do the same. Your big argument is that piracy is wrong, but I think theft's wrong as well, and that's what you're committing every time you try and monetize a video you don't own that abides by fair use law. Nintendo, you're a petty fucking thief committing legalized robbery over what amounts to pennies in some fucking cases. So if I said everybody should get a Raspberry Pi and fill it with every NES, SNES, N64, GameCube and Wii game they can think of, I am operating merely by the rules laid out by Nintendo itself. The rules that state I get to ignore bits of the law that inconvenience me. And I would never say that. I would never say that. I mean, it's perfectly possible for anyone to do it, and online instructions are really easy to find, but I'd never encourage piracy. I'm just saying it's totally okay if anybody does do it with Nintendo products. Also, it's probably fine if you go to the Nintendo store in New York and shoplift there. Again, I'm not saying you should shoplift from the Nintendo store, but if you do, I'd recommend a second floor at the back where the Zelda stuff is. It's pretty secluded, and there are lots of little things like trading card packets and badges that you can slip into your jacket pocket or attractive bag. I mean, don't do it obviously. But like I said, Nintendo's the digital equivalent of a video highwayman, so morally, you're in the clear. Oh, by the way, here's a fun trick I found out. If you've never heard of the copyright deadlock, it's a thing I do to stop companies like Nintendo making money off my content by using other work that gets flagged by Content ID. It's an ironic thing where trying to avoid getting in trouble for copyright infringement makes you deliberately infringe more copyright. When multiple companies claim a single video, the revenue can't go anywhere, so even even if you can't monetize it, they can't do it either. Well, fun twist. I recently learned you can deadlock Nintendo against a Nintendo. Just use footage claimed by Nintendo of America and then use other footage claimed by Nintendo Japan. They'll cancel each other out and Reggie Fils and me can't buy that one bag of Doritos 3Ds he was gonna spend the ad money on. <laughs> this is funny because Nintendo doesn't deserve to make money off a ton of content it sees the cash for. It still pushes that fucking creators program which is the only way to monetize Nintendo videos on YouTube reliably by letting them take your money first and then dish a portion back out to you like an allowance. It's a total conflict of interest for a critic like me, and yet the only method in which Nintendo recognises your work deserves to be financially controlled by you. Or rather, by them. With pocket money that they then give to you. Like they're your mum. Like Reggie's your mum. Nintendo will not be reasoned with when it comes to protecting its intellectual property, but in doing so it stomps on the IP rights of others. The Jimquisition, for example, is my intellectual property, and when I want it without ads, I fucking want it without ads, and I shouldn't have some third party forcing commercials onto my content over some trailer footage. And that's why I think it's totally fucking okay to pirate the ever-loving shit out of everything Nintendo's ever published, because if their attitude to the rights of others is is a big fuck you, then I think it's only proper to say fuck you right back. Thanks. <laughs> So I sort of struggle to uh, close this one out because I feel like I should end with a very serious note that obviously I do not encourage piracy, shoplifting, stuff like that, and I'm not saying anybody should go out and do it. But of course, if you do want to do it, then God damn it, that's the problem. I can't not follow it up with me then sarcastically telling you that if you want to do it, it's okay. Christ. I can't, I, I can't get, I simply don't respect Nintendo enough to non-sarcastically get the point across that I don't condone that sort of thing. Um, I don't respect them. They don't respect my rights. I don't see why I should respect their rights. Ever. I've made this point before. The copyright deadlock is a flagrant disrespect of copyright. Because that's how it has to be. Because copyright law is disrespected uh, uh, from the corporate end, so it needs to be disrespected from the creator end. And the copyright deadlock, which itself is willing, knowing, constant infringement of copyright, can only um, um, happen as a response to flagrant disrespect of copyright. That's why it exists. I do have a Majora's Mask sticker though, from that second pack, so that's, that's good. The rest are, ooh, Zant. Thank God for me, by the way. Got a Zant, I like, I like Zant. Oh, for those who are gonna bring it up, I do have an extender for the controller.
being facetious. Ubisoft. Time now for Oh Ubisoft. That's all the news that's going to make you go, No oh, Ubisoft, because everything Ubisoft does is eye rolling. <sighs> Damn it! So, anyway, For Honor was released this past week, and it's alright as a game, I guess. Uh, doesn't help that their big online game, Ubisoft's big online game, their first massive multiplayer experience for 2017. Uh, also launched without dedicated servers, so matchmaking was fucked. You kept getting booted out of matches halfway through and losing any progress you might have made, and generally, it was just a fucking nightmare. I don't think, for example, that uh, uh, you should be having bots appearing in team matches uh, for such a huge, big-budget title uh, that is focused so stringently on multiplayer, but I'm not Ubisoft, what would I know? Also, for a game that has a fan base now defending it as a fighting game, saying everyone got the wrong end of the stick about what it was supposed to be, I do find it interesting that it was promoted, certainly in the footage I saw, as a, a bigger thing, as you being part of a war and, and sort of getting into that sort of hack and slash type stuff. That's how it was promoted. People now comparing it to a fighting game, they're not wrong, but that does gloss over the fact that Ubisoft kind of didn't sell for... Like, like Jim Sterling then talked for ages about For Honor's marketing and didn't really make a point. Regardless, at least the microtransactions are in place. At least Ubisoft got its priorities straight and made sure that the, the premium currency is there and available to purchase without a hitch. You might not be able to stay in a match, but you can sure as hell pay in a match. <sighs> Oh, Ubisoft. What's wrong with you? 